I can change your nickname for you. All right, so we are um, we're gathering here together today to look at the teachings of uh, Zen Master Linji. Uh, we can say that Zen Master Linji is just like one of the most direct and sharpest and strongest uh, teachers in the Zen Buddhist tradition. And we've been going through these teachings for the past, um, I don't know, maybe almost a week now. And uh, it's been very enjoyable. And we're going to continue doing that today. All right. So um, I also see Arya here, Ava. Um, Ava and uh, who else? Ben. Cabron, Johnny, Levi, Louis, Mitra, Monifa, Mook, Natty Bird, and Usman. That's great. Just going to make an announcement in the server that we are getting started, that we are live. Now, for anyone who's unaware, um, the Discord app, uh, Discord can be an app on your phone. It can be an app on your computer. And you might notice that I use the, the everyone tag very generously. So I kind of send out this notification. And you can see it as just like a mindfulness bell, a reminder to come back to your breath, to come back to your body. But also you can um, you can see it as something that is reminding about the uh, the kind of deeper intentionality of this community, which is to show up, which is to practice. And it's these um, live community events and happenings that are really at the core of our um, kind of the the living, breathing community that's here. You know, this is where we get to see each other, where we get to hear each other, uh, where we, you know, we really show up and spend time together. So it's from these events that the community is um, supported. And uh, that's why I generously use these tags to kind of invite us all in. Okay, if you're watching over on YouTube, make sure that you say hello so I can see that you're you're here. All right. So um, as we are getting started, let's just take a few moments to uh, get grounded, to find the breath, to find the body, to find our heart. At this present moment, um, Recently, I've, I've come to say this bloody, beating heart. You know, it's kind of graphic, but it, point, it points to the importance of your heart. You know, and that blood, that graphicness, it's all right here. So, finding the heart, finding the breath, <clears throat> finding the body at this present moment, comfortable, stable position for the body, we can uh, sit upright, can sit with our shoulders back, strong back, soft, gentle front. Just at this moment to find and enjoy uh, the breath and the body happening right now. You can follow the breath, follow the breath as it uh, flows in deeply to the body. And so your awareness also, your presence also flowing deep into the body. allowing this body of motion, this body of activity, 
this mind of motion, this mind of activity, to fully come to a, a rest at this moment. Nothing to do, nothing to figure out, no special complicated situation going on. Just right now, putting the body down. Breathing and being aware. Breathing and bringing the mind home to the body at this moment. and bring up this uh, quality, this kind of invitation of being aware of something and willing to let it go. Picking up something and willing to put it down. To notice and relax. To notice and offer our gentle attention to the beating heart. We can even, if you like, you can put your hand over your heart. You can put your hand over your heart and uh, feel the heart beating. You are right here. This is home. Each beat is a beat of peace. We can say to our heart, Hello, heart. I see you. I feel you. I know that every day, without skipping even one beat, you are taking care of my body. Hello, heart. I see you. So as we feel more at rest and comfortable, we can bring our hands to be on our, uh, on our knees or sitting in our lap. and just taking a few more moments to breathe and be aware. To breathe and be with this moment. So it's important that when we find ourselves in this uh, position, in this situation, to really um, touch, 
this heart to touch this uh, ground, this home that is not somewhere outside, that is not confusing, not complicated, to touch this experience of being exactly where we need to be right now. This breath, this heart, this body, completely and utterly home. Breathing that in deeply and knowing that this right here is your life, your freedom, your peace. There's no need to seek somewhere else. There's no need to get anything or get rid of anything, but rather that you have everything you need for peace right here right now. Just sitting, just breathing and being aware. This is enough. And this is the home of joy. So we're now going to uh, begin our, uh, our reading, our exploration of the uh, Zen teachings of Master Linji. Please try to make the, uh, the focus of this practice um, not really to understand, because if you, if you make the focus of this practice to understand, then you're, you're going to fail. And there's, there's no need to make this a place of um, a failure or success, but to make this a place of practice. So listening from the heart, listening from the body, listening from the, the breath, the breathing experience um, is what's going to bring the most value uh, from this uh, activity. And in the same way, uh, certain points, certain periods when we stop and there's a, a question that comes up, something like that, sharing from the heart, sharing from the breath, sharing from the body, and uh, we will explore it like that together. If there's some things here that you don't understand, join the club. Um, I will try to, to add on or explain things as far as I know them with my background of um, Buddhist teachings, Buddhist culture, etc., with a, which is what a lot of this references. Um, but really, the point here is that we're not we're not coming here to get anything. We're coming here to show up, and that this is a uh, an avenue, a uh, an arrow point of showing up, and we're here to to enjoy that together. All right. So let's, uh, let's start with the reading. And we'll start off with a poem that we, we left off with yesterday. Uh, Zen Master Linji speaking about all of these different realms, all of these different worlds, all of these different experiences that we have mentally or physically, etc., etc., Master Linji said this, Phantoms, illusions, empty flowers. Why trouble yourself trying to grasp them? Gain, loss, right, wrong. Throw them all away at once. So 
so we'll continue. Followers of the Way This Buddha Dharma, this enlightened truth of mine, this Zen master, Zen monk speaking. Followers of the Way This Buddha Dharma of mine has come down to me in a very clear line. So uh, Zen Master Linji here is talking about this lineage. Zen, uh, Zen Master Linji had a, uh, a teacher, and that teacher had a teacher, and that teacher had a teacher. And the understanding here in Zen is that from the enlightenment of the Buddha, which was this enlightenment, this waking up to the truth that can't be put down into words, it can't be grasped, but more so that it's a matter of mind-to-mind -mind transmission. To, to know it for yourself. And if you know it for yourself, there can be a connection point with someone else who knows it for themselves. So there's this recognition, mutual recognition of knowing for yourself, seeing for yourself. But all this without a self. Okay, without someone, without something. You couldn't grasp it. So Zen Master Linji talking about that lineage, and it's also to a good point that if we are um, exploring like spirituality, if we are exploring, we want to know about the the bigger truth of reality or the deeper wisdom. You you want to connect with someone or connect with a source that has a lineage. You know, we we human beings have been around for a while, and we didn't always have TikTok to entertain ourselves, so we had to find another way. Um, and that way, in many cases, was looking inward, was investigating, was stepping onto a spiritual path. We didn't always have so much access to these uh, concocted distractions and uh, kind of presentations. So this, is, this truth investigation has been going on for a while. Um, Zen Master Linji is now going to share about some of his past teachers and the way that they uh, expressed. Followers of the Way This Buddha Dharma of mine has come down to me in a very clear line. From Reverend Ma Yu, Reverend Tan Sia, Reverend, Reverend Tao Ai, and Reverend Lu Shan, and Shi Kung, a single road going all over the world. But not a soul believes this, and everyone speaks slanderously of it. Reverend Tao Yi's way of doing things was simple, direct, nothing mixed in. He had 300, 500 students, but not a one of them could see what he was getting at. Reverend Lu Shan, reverend here is probably meaning a monk, a monk in the Zen tradition. Reverend Lu Shan was utterly free, true and correct. But whether he came at them with compliance or opposition, his students could never fathom what was going on, all being reduced to dumbfounded amazement. Reverend Tan Zia toyed with a gem, concealing it, then revealing it, then revealing it. The students who came to him all had to put up with curses. Ma Yu's way of doing things was as bitter as the bark of the Chinese cork tree. No one could get near him. The way Shi Kong went about it was to look for students by pointing an arrow at them. All who came to him were terrified. Now Linji speaking about himself. The way I do things at present is to go about in a true and proper manner, constructing and demolishing, toying and sporting with supernatural changes entering every kind of environment, but doing nothing wherever I am, not permitting the environment to pull me awry. 
whatever comes to me seeking something, I immediately come out. Oh, whoever. Whoever comes to me seeking something, I immediately come out to size them up. But they don't recognize me. Then I put on different robes. The student forms an understanding on that basis and begins to be drawn into my words. Hopeless, this blind, bald head without any eyes. They concentrate on the rope. They're not just talking about me. They're talking about everybody here, okay? Although I see someone else is also bald. But he's talking about monks. It's like this. In the Buddhist society, in the Buddhist community, monks are, you know, high up on this pedestal, okay? So he's kind of <laughs> tearing them down, saying, you know, just because you're a monk doesn't mean anything. So <clears throat> go back a little bit. So the way that Zen Master Linji, the way that um, he shows up, the way that he's teaching, the way that he's going about this enlightened way of living. The way I do things at present is to go about in a true and proper manner, constructing and demolishing, toying and sporting with supernatural changes. Entering, so this here, to, toying and sporting with supernatural changes, um, it's to, it's to point, point to like the depth of that toying and sporting. It's not just toying and sporting and kind of playing or um, toying, sporting, playing, um, kind of loosely interacting or using freely like money or cars or different situations that happen, but it's even beyond that. It's even supernatural changes, supernatural phenomena. Isn't I mean, if, if we see, you know, someone turn, if we see someone do a magic trick, we're somehow confused. But if we see some kind of soup, you know, almost a special car, we're taken in. We can't toy with it. We take it seriously. But Linji here is saying, even for supernatural changes, you know, a quick change of the weather, the, the sun rising where the moon is supposed to be, uh, walking in the night under the moon and everything becomes light, even these things, um, toying and sporting with supernatural changes, all phenomena. Entering every kind of environment, but doing nothing wherever I am. And this, maybe this goes back to before when Linji said, Master Linji said, um, if you're desiring anything, if you're trying to get anything, you will suffer. Better to do nothing. So, Entering every kind of environment, every kind of conditions, but doing nothing wherever I am. Not permitting, not allowing the environment to pull me awry. We can say to pull me into secondary thinking, to pull me into doubt, or being stuck, or being trapped. Now about Linji meeting students. Whoever comes to me seeking something, I immediately come out to size them up. So whoever comes to Linji seeking something, he immediately comes out to size them up, shows himself to size them up. But they don't recognize me. Then I put on various different robes. The student forms an understanding on that basis and begins to be drawn into my words. So Linji, Zen Master Linji, just showing up or, or showing his presence, his embodiment, Zen Master Linji is this enlightened kind of being, this ultra-wise monk. But coming out and showing up, he, the, the student doesn't recognize them. You know, it might be, for me, it comes to mind, maybe it's like a kid or a group of kids, you have something to offer them. You know, you have some kind of wisdom, you have some kind of experience, and you, you or a person, and you show up and you present yourself, but they don't recognize you. They don't see that you, you know, you have this wisdom or that you actually, you're a, you're a, a parent, you're an uncle, you're a, a caretaker for them, right? We're, we're all in a community together, so you're in this role, but they don't recognize you. 
So then I put on various different robes, so appearances. The student forms an understanding on that basis and begins to be drawn into my words. Now they're on the hook because of appearances. Hopeless. This blind, bald head without any eyes. They concentrate on the robe I am wearing, noting whether it is blue, yellow, red, or white. If I strip off the robe and enter a clean, pure environment, the student takes one look and is filled with delight and longing. If I throw that away too, the student becomes muddled in mind, racing around wildly in a distracted manner, exclaiming that now I have no robe at all. Then I turn to him and say, Do you know the person who wears this robe of mine? Suddenly he turns his head, and then he knows me at last. Let's continue. Fellow believers, don't get so taken up with the robe. The robe can't move of itself. The person is the one who can put on the robe. There is a clean, pure robe. There is a no-birth robe, a Bodhi robe, an awakening robe, a Nirvana robe, an enlightenment robe, a mind master robe, a Buddha robe. Fellow believers, these sounds, names, words, phrases, are all nothing but changes of robe. The sea of breath in the region below the navel stirs itself into motion. The teeth batter and mold it and it comes out as a statement of an idea, speaking about words, sounds, names, phrases. Then she says this, the sea of breath, the sea of breath in the region below the navel stirs itself into motion. The teeth batter and mold it, and it comes out as a statement of an idea. So we know for certain that these are mere phantoms. Um, about this line here, does anyone have a comment or a question? I'll read it one more time and then let's see if we, we have a question or something to share. You share your experience, what have you. Fellow believers, this means uh, people with a trust, people with a faith in the path to become enlightened, to end suffering, to see through appearances. Fellow believers, do not get so taken up with the robe. The robe can't move of itself. The person is the one who can put on the robe. There is a clean, pure robe. There is a no-birth robe a awakening robe, a enlightenment robe, a mind master robe, a Buddha robe. Now this, this is a robe here, I think can be said as appearances, an appearance, but it's also a robe. There is a Buddha robe. You know, it's, it's not just, you can't just say it's appearances. It's, it's what Linji is saying here. Fellow believers, these sounds, names, Words, phrases, are all nothing but changes of robe. The sea of breath in the region below the navel stirs itself into motion. The teeth batter and mold it, and it comes out as a statement of an idea. So we know for certain that these are mere phantoms. OK, 
Okay, someone have something to share about this? Don't be shy. Doesn't need to be profound, your words. They just need to be sincere. And then it is right on the money, so I to speak. Have a question. Right on the merit. Yes, what's your question? Um, what does it mean, the area below the navel? Is he referring to like thoughts that just come from impulse? No, no, no. He's Linji here is talking about the sea of breath below the navel. If you, if you breathe very, very deeply, you can feel the breath all the way down into the stomach, all the way down below even the belly button. So we can feel the breath going very deep down there. So this sea of breathing means the, the, the breath itself is coming out of the body. And then the, this breath is you know, going through the teeth and the, the, the jaw, the face, and then it's coming out. So that it's just a phantom. How often we are stuck, we are trapped by a sound, something that someone says to us, some word, some story, some name, someone's name. We're trapped by that. We're trapped by a word. We're trapped by phrases etc. These are all nothing but the changing of a robe, uh, the something that is covering us, something that we are involved with. It's just a change of appearances. And then as Master Linji says here, the sea of breath in the region below the navel stirs itself into motion. So he's pointing to, you know, your breath, okay, your, your breathing process stirs into motion and then the teeth batter and and it comes out this word this phrase this sound comes out as a statement of an idea so we know for certain that these are mere phantoms they don't have this special real existence it's a phantom are you looking into the subtle sea of breathing are you getting stuck in your sea of breathing you know, don't take it for the word, go deeper. Are you getting, are you uh, attached to this, the machinations of breath, the breath and air and oxygen like a sea flowing around in the, below the navel, deep in your lungs? So these words, these phrases, these sounds, these names, they're just phantoms. They don't have um, solidity to them. And in that way, we, we need not be burdened by them. We need not be taken in by them. We need not be trapped by them. I, I think I understand, but is the breath not meant to guide us to enlightenment? What's that? What did you say? I mean, I, I think I understand, but is it not following the breath that would lead us to enlightenment? If you are following the breath, if you are getting attached to the breath, then that is the antithesis of enlightenment. You're uh, getting okay. attached, okay. you're getting stuck. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. The breath happening of its own cord, accord. It's just like the sea. The sea, is, there's so much energy in the ocean, there's so much wave, there's so much movement, there's so much current, there's so much, the, the subtlety of it we couldn't even possibly imagine. All that water and particles and things kind of flowing together like that. It's the same with the breath. So don't get stuck on breathing is the path to enlightenment. Um, get stuck on there is no breath, there is no breathing, there is no enlightenment. There's nothing to grasp, there's nothing to get. There's nothing to chase after. And if you stop breathing, you're going to, you know, you're going to die. So what will you do, Alice? I think I will continue practicing. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Um have a question or something to share? The 
I have a comment. Um, I think what he's saying is don't get caught up in the labels, that the robes are just manifestations of these titles. And uh, I'm going on a stretch here, but I think the idea with the breath and the belly and so forth, I, I imagine that, you know, there's always a sea going on, that existence is tumultuous. It's There's a lot going on in the sea. You know, there's all the organisms that live in the sea and can go places and it can go nowhere. So I think it's kind of like, you know, the water is the source. The sea is the source of and these robes are just manifestations of, you know, desires or uh, wishes. So don't get caught up in the labels, what I think. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, continue on. So we know for certain that these are mere phantoms, temporary appearances. Fellow believers, the karma of sounds and words finds outward expression. So this is the, the cause and effect of intentional actions of sound of word is really cause and effect fellow believers the karma of sounds and words finds outward expression expresses out the objects of mind are manifested within okay so the the karma of sounds and words finds goes out finds an outward expression the objects of mind are manifested within mind objects, feelings, perceptions, attachments in our mind. Because of mental processes, thoughts are formed. But all of these are just robes. If you take the robe that a person is wearing to be the person's true identity, then, though endless kalpas may pass, Kalpa is this Buddhist term for like the, the time in which it takes for a universe to begin and end. So like from the Big Bang to the, uh, what's it called, the cold death of the universe, something like that. Yeah. So because of mental processes, thoughts are formed. But all of these are just robes. If you take the robe that a person is wearing to be the person's true identity, then, though endless kalpas may pass, you will become proficient in robes only and will remain forever circling round in the threefold world, that is, the world of desire, of forms, and formless, transmigrating in the realm of birth and death, so constantly stuck in the cycle of birth and death. Better to do nothing, to meet someone but not recognize them, talk with them but not know their name. Let's try replacing robes with appearances, okay? Because of mental processes, because of the, the natural machinations of mind, thoughts are formed, thoughts come about. But all of these thoughts that come about are just appearances. So, for example, here, these thoughts are just an appearance of mental processes going on. Very subtle, electrical, I mean, as subtle as you can imagine, right? As refined as... Um, so small, just like um, 
just like sand on the beach. You pick up a a big handful of sand, you're going to spend, um, you know, uh, what, hours and hours and hours counting each piece? Well, your brain, your mind, these mental processes are much more refined by that. They're just neurons firing off, right? I mean, it's so, so refined. So because of mental processes, thoughts are formed. But all of these are just robes. They are appearances. They are not the, the, the actual uh, conditions. That's not even the mental processes. It's not the truth. It's just an appearance. If you take the appearance that a person is presenting or wearing, kind of carrying around with them, their self-identity, their appearance, to be the person's true identity, then though endless kalpas, endless time may pass, you will become proficient in appearances only. And you will remain forever circling around in the, the world of desire and the world of attachment, transmigrating in the, in the realm of birth and death transmigrating, stuck in this um, attachment to the arising and passing away of experiences, of phenomena. You'll be stuck, transmigrating, rolling around, in stuck in this condition, stuck in that condition. When you go to hell, you'll be stuck in hell. When you go to heaven, you'll be stuck in heaven. When you are like a living animalistically, you'll be stuck there. So, don't get stuck in the appearance. If you take an appearance to be the true identity, if you take an appearance to what is generally apparent to be the truth, then you will be uh, stuck in appearances. And you will be stuck in a suffering world. Better to do nothing to meet someone, but not recognize them. Talk with them, but not know their name. Anyone have uh, something to share about this? This is quite an interesting, interesting case. Alaya over on the YouTube. Okay, glad that you're here, Alaya. Alia. Um, Aliyah said, what does that mean, a person's true identity? So what does that mean, a person's true identity? That which is true regardless of the appearance. Okay, so our appearances can be so different. There's a robe, there's an appearance of being in ideal conditions. You present in a certain way. There's an appearance of being in the worst of conditions. You present in a certain way. Okay? So, um, to see someone's true self is to see what is beyond appearances. What is beyond the robe? What is under the robe? Not just the robe that I wear or the robe or the cloth that someone wears, but what is underneath the conditions that they find themselves in. The ideas, the, the phantoms, the stories that they have uh, accumulated in their life and kind of carry around with them. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a meditator. I'm this. I'm that. What is underneath all that? what is underneath the appearance. Okay, we will uh, continue here. The trouble with students these days is that they seize on words and form their understanding on that basis, period. The trouble with students these days, that is the, the trouble with people who are on the path, people who want to 
end their suffering, people who want to become enlightened, okay? To see the truth of all truths, to see reality itself. The trouble with students these days is that they seize, they lock on, they grab a hold of words and form their understanding on that basis. If you do not grab onto words, what will you do? How will you explain it? How will you navigate it? Not relying on words, what can you share? What can you express? So Janie Doe over on YouTube says, um, is Buddhism open to interpretation? Buddhism might be, but this phrase isn't. The trouble with students these days is that they seize on words and form their understanding on that basis. So what kind of understanding can you form that is not based on words? And uh, Aliyah over on YouTube uh, said, I'll have to sit with that for a minute. Thank you. And I'm sure that's a good lesson for all of us. That's a good guidance. You know, a lot of these things is not to <laughs> walk around confused, but to, to sit with it, to be with it, to feel it, right? To be present with this, you know, not relying on words, not making an understanding out of words. Okay, so we'll continue. The trouble with students these days is that they seize on words and form their understanding on that basis. In a big notebook, they copy down the sayings of some worthless old fellow, wrapping it up in three layers, five layers of carrying cloth, not letting, it, not letting anyone else see it calling it the dark meaning and guarding it as something precious. What a mistake. Blind fools. What sort of juice do they expect to get out of old dried bones? Okay, so what kind of juice are you going to get? Looking, well, what about these words, these stories, this old thing that, you know, we talked about or we experienced back there? There's no juice in that. There is a bunch of fellows who can't tell good from bad, but poke around in the scriptural teachings, hazard a guess here and there, and come up with an idea in words, as though they took a lump of shit, mushed it around in their mouth, and then spat it out and passed it on to somebody else. They are like people who play pass the word parlor games, pass the word parlor games, wasting their whole lives like that. I have left household life, they say. But if someone questions them about the Dharma of the Buddhas, they clamp their mouths shut, speak not a syllable, their eyes like two blackened chimneys their mouths drooping down like a bent carrying pole. Even when the time comes for Maitreya to make their appearance in the world, they will still be off in some other world where they've been sent to suffer the torments of hell. So there's, um, there's a lot to unpack here. But uh, specifically, I'll do my best to not take this personally, but specifically, um, Zen Master Linji is talking about um, monks or people on the path who have 
um, who don't really have a ability to discern. They can't tell good from bad. They are really not skillful. <clears throat> But they poke around in these scriptural teachings, you know, of, of wise masters, etc., these deep Buddhist teachings, and they kind of come up with a, a guess or an interpretation uh, with words about that teaching. They don't actually have an understanding, but they just kind of come up with a guess about it, a feeling about it. And then, you know, Linji says, Master Linji says very harshly about that, um, it's as though they have took a lump of shit mushed it around in their mouth and then spat it out and passed it on to somebody else. They are like people who play pass the word parlor games, wasting their whole lives like that. Okay? Um, so this is this, this kind of a, a sharp criticism or warning about doing like that, practicing like that, interpreting like that in this shallow way. I've left household life, they say. But if someone questions them, if someone challenges them, then they clamp their mouths shut. They couldn't, uh, they couldn't give a, a turning word, so to speak. They couldn't really show up to that moment and meet that challenge and be skillful in that dynamic, unknown situation. So in doing like that, in poking around with these teachings and coming up with your own understanding and, um, you know, exclaiming, you know, well, I'm someone on the path, I'm someone who gets it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then an example is that, you know, they're, they're not really able to meet complicated challenges or, or situations. Then uh, Master Linji says here, even when the time comes for Maitreya, so Maitreya is understood to be the, the future Buddha, like the next Buddha. So in Buddhism, there's this understanding that uh, Siddhartha Gautama, the Buddha that all of you have heard about, I'm sure, is um, was born, and then that experience enlightenment, and then that enlightenment, that wisdom, those teachings go out like um, like reverberations on a pond from this initial drop of the Buddha's enlightenment. But eventually, those reverberations will become less and less and less and less, and eventually the Buddha's enlightenment will uh, disappear from the world. Um, and my understanding, it, I'm not 100% about this, but it goes along with this concept that um, as time goes by, it's not it's not necessarily that we won't have access to the Buddhist teachings, but that people will not have the capacity to understand or to relate to or to receive those, to use those. And so this is the, the Dharma ending age, and then those teachings will, the Buddha's enlightenment will, that Buddha's enlightenment will disappear from the world. And then uh, a little bit moving forward, there will be another Buddha, a self-enlightened one, someone who reaches enlightenment through their own direct discernment, not relying on anyone else. So that's Maitreya. And that's supposed to be way, way out in the future, you know, not a couple years from now. So Master Linji says, um, these monks or these people who are like that, um, even when the time comes for Maitreya, way out in the future, this future Buddha, to make their appearance in the world, they will still be off in some other world where they have been sent to suffer the torments of hell. So that this kind of uh, activity has a, a great karmic ret retribution if you don't know what you're doing. If, you're not, if you don't really have an experience or you're not skillful about this, um, then it's, it's actually, a, a, a Master Linji says here, a really bad karmic offense that it will lead to quite serious results. Fellow believers, you rush around frantically, one place and another. And we do, don't we? Fellow believers, you rush around frantically, one place and another. What are you looking for? Tramping, wandering around, tramping, till the soles of your feet are squashed flat? There is no Buddha to be sought, no way to be carried out, 
no dharma to be gained. Seeking outside for some Buddha possessing form, this hardly becomes you. If you wish to know your original mind, do not try to join with it. Do not try to depart from it. Followers of the Way Alice The true Buddha is without form. The true way is without an entity. The true Dharma, the true truth, is without characteristics. These three things mingle and blend, fusing together in one place. But because you fail to perceive this, you let yourselves be called creatures muddled by karma-created consciousness. One more time. This is actually the, the closing article, the, the closing piece of this, um, this uh, lecture that we've been reading. Um, and don't worry, there's plenty more, but uh, this is the closing piece of it that we've been going through the past few days. Fellow believers, you rush around frantically one place and another. What are you looking for? Tramping till the soles of your feet are squashed flat, flat, flat? There is no Buddha to be sought. No way to be carried out. No Dharma to be gained. Seeking outside for some Buddha possessing form. This hardly becomes you. Maybe hear that if you're seeking it outside for some Buddha possessing form, some special teacher, some special experience, this will hardly help you to, to become the Buddha or to see the Buddha. If you wish to know your original mind, do not try to join with it. Do not try to depart from it. Followers of the Way The true Buddha the true enlightenment is without form. The true path to enlightenment, the true way, is without an entity to walk it. The true dharma, the true wisdom of this present moment that leads us to enlightenment, that shows us enlightenment, has no characteristics. These three things, the Buddha, the way, the Dharma, mingle and blend, fusing together in one place. Maybe we can say without form, without entity, without characteristics, these three things mingle and blend, fusing together in one place, this place. But because you fail to perceive this, you allow yourselves to be called creatures muddled by karma-created consciousness. Okay, so... Any question or sharing experience? We all talked about the difference between the Dharma and the way. Is there any difference there? Or can the, those words really be used interchangeably, really? Um, dharma can be the, the true Buddhist teachings or the true truth teachings. And the way is the, the path of walking that, of going from one shore to the other. The shore of suffering, the shore of creatures muddled by karma, created consciousness, meaning this kind of almost animalistic form of relying on conditions and relying on um, our intentional action rather than seeing through 
cause and effect completely. So um, moving from that shore to um, seeing without form, without a self, without characteristics to be mingled and blended, fusing together in one place, this place. So the way is moving from, from here to there, or seeing that there's no here to there to begin with. Better to do nothing, as Master Linji says, and to not form an understanding based on words. And this is very much like practice advice. This is a gui uh, meditation guidance to, to practice like this, to be like this. It doesn't mean you can't use the toilet. You know, it doesn't mean that you become uh, a dullard or uh, a ridiculous person. You know, well, what do I do now? You know, <laughs> go and defecate, eat, sleep, live your life ordinarily, sincerely. Do your best. Don't do anything. Don't set up an understanding based on words or phrases. Okay, Alice sharing something. Alice, can you read what you shared? Or I can read it for you. Okay. Um, Alice said, I think this is also a good call to bring your awareness to your body whenever you find yourself reacting, clinging to words or sayings, be it good or bad, from a stranger or from a Zen master. Lovely. Thank you, Alice. Um. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Yes. The an understanding based on words, is it possible that what's being said there is you've traveled, have you ever connected with someone where you didn't really share a language? What's your what's your question about what Linji said? The there are times like in like that scenario, if you're traveling, the you can communicate intention or feeling. That's or not what that's not what's being spoken about here. Uh, this is not this is speaking about the mind itself, reality itself. So reality doesn't meet itself. The mind doesn't need to see itself. The mind is seeing itself. Seeing is seeing itself. It doesn't need to see itself. So this isn't about people meeting each other, people forming a relationship together, what Zen Master Linji said here. It's to not make an understanding based on words. It's to not ask a question from an understanding based on words. Someone, something, sometime, someplace but to free yourself from the limitation of understanding based on words. That is the encouragement. That is the direction here. So if you apply it to walking around and meeting people and, and sharing intentionality, sure, I mean, that's, that is what it is, but it's not what Linji is talking about here. Okay, thank you, Brendan. Yes, Christina. Uh, yeah, uh, yesterday I I uh, uh, watched the videos when when, you, when uh, this uh, get started videos with uh, Arjun Brown, and um, I uh, it was really nice. Uh, he explained um, uh, not to to get anything with a donkey and the carrot. And I, I could recommend everyone to to look at this because uh, I get a, a whole other picture of it. 
That's great. And he's really, yes, and he's really funny too. <laughs> so it's easy to understand. So. Yeah, that's. Let's see where that is. That's in the Get Started channel on the Discord, and that's yeah. Ajahn Brahm's um, on enlightenment, right? Talking about enlightenment. Yes, there are several there, but uh, look, look at it all. It's the one, <laughs> it's really... yeah, in the Get Started. Okay, that's wonderful. Yes. Thank you. I'll share that link on the YouTube as well. People who are watching over on YouTube. Okay, so at this moment, we can all bring our hands together. And um, using this uh, Buddhist word, this traditional Buddhist word, sadhu, which means excellent, wonderful, well done. Um, a few things we kind of do with this chant. One is we, we're giving ourselves a pat on the back. We're recognizing the, the wholesomeness, the goodness, the excellence of this activity of our showing up here. Um, and we're also kind of offering out, sharing out as we chant this, um, any merits, any good effects, any blessings that we've accumulated from this practice as we chant, we are sharing those out, offering those out. And... Um, and finally, we, we all harmonizing and, and chanting together. Okay, so I invite you to join me in three sadhus. And uh, after that, we'll take a deep bow, and that'll be the end of our session. Sadhu. Satu S
Satu. We can make a deep bow. Okay. Thank you all for being here. I appreciate everyone's presence. Uh, we will have a, um, I'll be hosting a more just a meditation this evening at 8 p.m. New York City time. And I believe that uh, one of our community members, uh, Cassiana, will be hosting um, a meditation and reading uh, by a book from Tignat Han um, at uh, 12. 12.30, so in just a little bit. Um, thank you all for being here. Hope to see you again soon. And uh, be free, be happy, enjoy doing nothing. But you... Oh.